what I'm talking about. Um, hello and a very warm welcome. I think you should all hear me now. I'm still managing all those people who would like to join us. So I'd like, still like to take like, I don't know, one or two minutes to give everyone the chance to join us. But maybe while you're already waiting, um, we could do something to get to know each other better. So get out your smartphone and um, go on menti.com and answer this first question from me. From where did you dial in? From where are you dialing in? So get a good first impression. Wow, Malaysia, Amsterdam, New York. Woo, we are a really international crowd here. That's amazing. Wiesbaden, Belgium, Barcelona, Lithuania. Wow. <laughs> this is just plain amazing from where you're all dialing in. A lot of people from Berlin, I see, Frankfurt, London. Stuttgart, Berlin, Frankfurt seems to be as Germany is quite a hot spot for dialing in. We do have quite an international crowd here. The funny thing is more than 800 people signed up to the session and we are only 63 now. So I might as well just start and see whether someone else dials in and um, what happens there. So 36 of you already gave me quite a good impression of where you're coming from. I'm really amazed. Um, I do have another question for you um, because I'm also interested in this question. So what's your job description? So that I kind of get a feeling of um, where you're coming from or what your background is. So you would need to go to Menti again and um, use the number or code of 897236. Obviously I'm a researcher, <laughs> but I will introduce myself in a second. A lot of designers, consultants, project manager, a lot of UX researchers. Okay, interesting. It looks as though Experienced design and UX researchers are the ones who are really joining here. That's amazing. Consultants as well. Cool. 
innovation porn star who's that <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, so I don't know whether uh, more people will dial in. So I'm just starting with a welcome. We already kind of got to know each other a little bit. Um, I know where you're coming from. I know what your background is. And um, I actually do have a third question for you um, before we go into um, the introduction. And my third question would be, and now I'm really curious about that one. Um, so how many research project, projects have you already conducted? I can see that there were a lot of researchers in here and I'm just curious um, of getting an understanding of the share here, how much experience you have. So again, woohoo, more than 11. We have quite some experienced people in this in this call. That's amazing. Okay, we, so we really have like a a lot of them here that are, are totally new to the field and a lot of very experienced ones. Both is really great. 42 answers. Let's see whether some more is coming. Okay, cool. I think that kind of gives me a very good impression. Um, so, first of all, maybe um, let's, let me stop sharing my screen so that you can really see me. Um, hello and a very warm welcome. And I'm really thankful that you're joining me on this research session for the Design Bar Camp. Um, You've already told me a little bit about you. I want to tell you some things about me so that you know um, who will guide you through this session. Um, my name is Nina. I originally studied psychology and I'm actually a qualitative researcher since more than 15 years. Qualitative researcher, I think, is a very important differentiation here because it means I'm talking to people. I don't set up um, questionnaires. I don't set up surveys, but I'm really talking to people. So I'm out there in the world doing the laundry with people at home, um, seeing how moms maybe feed their kids, or I've been to the S and um, talked to people um, how um, they follow their shower routines. So I've been out there, done it. And I'm also a design thinking coach and design thinking trainer. And last but not least, I'm also training research. Um, what I wanna do, okay, some more people are joining. Um, First of all, I'm in this call alone. My uh, sidekick kind of jumped out because she was sick. So I'm trying to handle everything at the same time. But I think we will manage that. You already did that. You muted yourself. It would be amazing if you could also all use your video function. So it gives me the feeling of proximity if I can see it. Um, what would also be great, um, if you have a question, use the chat function. As I said, I'm alone in this call, so I'm going to try to um, cater to that and I'm going to try to answer all your questions, but well, I can't promise you that I will be able to do it, but at least I'm going to try. If I'm not able to answer all your questions, feel free to reach out via LinkedIn afterwards and I'm happy to help you then. Um, also, if you have a, a question if, if you want to talk out loud, as I ask you to mute because we are so many people in the call, just use the raise your hand um, symbol in the participant overview. And actually, I just saw that my Zoom things are all in German, but I'm sure that you will find the muting video on and also the raise the hand. Okay, um, what I'm planning to do with you today um, is actually I want to give you a short introduction on why research is so important because I think that's one of the main things 
we as researchers, but also as newcomers to research, have to argue about that research is important. I would then like to go into an interactive session with you. We're going to start with a silent brainstorming, and I picked out one of the main questions here because I want to know what are your three biggest challenges when you want to pitch research to stakeholder, your team, your boss. We're going to go into breakout sessions um, to discuss possible solutions. And at the very end, I'm sure I will still be able to answer your questions regarding research. Okay, so let me start with the topic of why research is important. And actually, that is one of the questions that I ask most often. And well, picture says more than a thousand words. And I actually really love this picture because everyone sees the world in a different way. As I told you, uh, I initially studied psychology and actually I learned back then that, how do you say, an objective reality doesn't exist, but that we all as humans construct our own reality. Having said so, as a researcher, it's our task to find out, so what is the reality out there that people perceive, that people construct? And as you can nicely see in this uh, little cartoon, I really love it. Um, you might make the mistake if you just look at a very small part um, of things that you mistake what it actually is. And that is actually one of the strongest points why research is so important. Going out there, understanding and actually gaining a holistic picture of everything that's out there. Another thing I'd like to share with you, um, it's actually my favorite overview. And as a lot of you are design thinkers or do have a design thinking research, you probably know that overview. But nevertheless, I always take it again and again because I think it's one of the strongest ones to pitch research to stakeholders or see why research is so important. So let's have a look at it. Well, you probably know that when developing a product, a service or going into an idea, it's really important to think about feasibility and viability. I think especially Germans, we are a country of engineers, we love to look into feasibility. With feasibility, I mean, like, can we really do this? So does my company, my team, are we able to get access to the key resources? Would we be able to build it, to produce it, to program it, whatever um, area you are in? So it's a very key question. And the second key question is, um, should we do this? So, especially when we talk about an area, of course, where you want to earn money with your product or with your service, the question should be, does the product generate more revenue than cost? If you're working in an NGO area, there might be other, um, other um, um, areas on how you, um, on whether you need to generate more revenues than cost. But when we think about the normal economy, well, of course, you somehow have to earn money with it. So actually, um, working in the research industry since decades, a lot of companies I know, and actually also a lot of startups I know, they strongly focus on those two things. Feasibility, can we do it? Viability, should we do it? Will we earn money with it? And I mean, it's like, don't get me wrong. Those two things are really, really important. But what's often missing is the third one, and that's where the magic happens. So the question is, does someone want it? Because it absolutely makes no sense of developing a product or a service that no one wants. So it's high, of highest importance to look into the de desirability of a product or a service before even going deeper. And actually, when those three interact, so when the desirability, the viability, and the feasibility is there, that's when the magic happens. I don't know whether you know the famous TV show Shark's Tank. It's where um, inventors pitch their ideas in front of investors asking for money to, uh, to go into business. And honestly, I really, really love that show. Because as I said, a lot of companies I'm working with they strongly focus on feasibility and viability. And they take their own experience or their own opinion of saying, of saying yes, this product is desirable. 
because I would want it, my friends would want it, my mom would want it. So they strongly focus on feasibility and viability. When you look at the Shark Tank show, there are quite often a lot of people who pitch products that come from the desirability part and they have never thought about feasibility and viability. So they sat down and identified a problem in their everyday life and said like, okay, the world really needs a solution to that. And they've been building something for years and prototyping something for years, then going into the show. And actually quite often the investors are asking, you know what? I don't know how you will ever produce that to a price that someone will buy it. So I really like those two worlds and I can just recommend you watching this show. It's big fun. So any problem, uh, any product, any service should um, offer all the three parts, feasibility, viability, and desirability. And actually desirability is the part where most research really kicks in. So it's research about the wishes of users or consumers or humans, uh, what do they really want? What is their real problem? Because it really doesn't make sense to build something or keep on going if you are solving a problem no one really has, a problem you maybe just imagine. So always look at the three of them. I'd like to give you um, three examples, or actually I'd like to discuss three examples with you. So think about those three fact factors. A product should be viable, feasible, and desirable. Does any one of you know Theranos uh, and know why I took that example and what was maybe missing there? Maybe you want to raise your hand and share. No one knows Theranos? Never heard about the company? Do you have someone raising their hand? No, actually, that was a startup from the US um, who went on the market saying like, okay, um, we, we developed um, a new way of blood testing, which is way cheaper. Sorry, I'm just seeing there's something in the chat. So let me... Um, she's in jail now. Yes, Joe, you're right. <laughs> Do you know the story? You want to share it, Joe? Maybe you can unmute yourself. What happened with Theranos? Vaguely, it was, uh, I think, um, DNA testing, and they said they were capable of doing this and that and that, but they weren't technologically capable of doing any of it, so it was all a complete scam, and it was med I think it was medical. Exactly. You're absolutely right. And looking at it, I mean, and that is the thing. They built something people really wanted, really loved. Like a quick, I think it was even blood or blood DNA, didn't read them that much into it. So people really wanted it because it was cheap, it was quick, it was really desirable. They were able to sell it um, to very, well, comparably low price, what it would normally cost, but they would be able to do revenue. Well, however, actually they were not able to produce it. So they had a product that didn't work. So uh, looking at what I just showed, um, yeah, they missed out on the, um, on the way of are we able to do it. Let's take the second example, Dropbox. Looking like um, at, how would you say, our graphic on desirability, feasibility, and viability. Anyone knows why I took that example in here? Maybe raise your hand. Lumi Soto is another example. Yeah, I don't know that one. Um, Dropbox. Someone um, knows what's the deal with Dropbox. Want to raise your hand? I don't see a hand raised. Faiz. Desirability. Um, okay, I have I have one raised hand. Okay, I'm I'm muting you, Elizabeth. Do you want to share? Dropbox. You should be unmuted. Elizabeth? Sorry. Yes. Hello. What? What do you need? Uh, oh, you raised your hand. I thought you wanted to answer my question. I'm sorry, but. Uh, 
Um, it's by mistake. It's no because I, I know what is this. It ah, is, okay, okay. It is a platform. Well, yeah. Well, the thing, um, as I said, with uh, um, Theranos. At first, at the beginning, I used to use it, but now uh, I forgot this platform. It is, I don't think it is useful for me. Okay. I, 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 I don't know. More or less, I am. Uh, it is not interesting for me now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because actually, looking at the numbers, Dropbox is very well known worldwide. Um, you don't use it any longer. Um, however, they do have very high, um, very high uh, numbers of users. People are actually quite crazy about it. But the thing is, up to now, they weren't profitable um, within one quarter. So again, they do have a very interesting product there. They can make it work. They do have that technology. However, they can't earn money with it. So last but not least, let, uh, let's have a look at the last example, Google Plus. Anyone has an idea? What was the problem there? Joe wants to go again. <laughs> can you unmute yourself? I, uh, <laughs> I can let anybody else go first as well. <laughs> but, I don't yeah, see as, anyone as, 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 as uh, Vikram and Beatrice are saying in the chat, uh, there's no desirability for it. <laughs> Exactly. It was quite a nice idea. I mean, Facebook was out there and the idea it was quite clear. Um, okay, uh, let's go there as well. They were able to do it. They were um, able to produce it, but um, yeah, no one wanted it. Okay, so I think you're getting the idea here and why I'm going so strongly onto why research matters. It's all about understanding the desirability. What I'd now like to do is step into the next one. And I'd like to ask you to do a silent brainstorming with your paper and pencil and think about what are your three biggest challenges when you want to pitch research to a stakeholder, your team, and that's not brilliant though. <laughs> um, so what are your three biggest challenges when you want to pitch research to a stakeholder, your team, and your boss? Because based on a little research I did up front, I realized that that was a topic that most people were interested in when it comes to research. So please take um, four minutes. I'm going to set a, a timer and tell you when there is only 60 minutes, uh, 60 seconds left. And think about what are your three biggest challenges when you want to pitch research to a stakeholder. And write it down. We will share it afterwards.
Okay, you have one minute left. Five seconds. Okay, time is up. We are 63 people now. Actually, of course, it would be too much sharing one by one. So what I'd like to do is again, using um, Mentimeter with a word, uh, okay with a word cloud and let me see that that works yes so um you've done a silent brainstorming and thought about okay what are your three biggest challenging challenges when you want to pitch research to a stakeholder, your team, or your boss. So again, go to Menti, use the code 699045 and put it in there. So that we can choose as a team what the biggest challenge is to work on it in the next step. Mm -hmm. Participants. It slows down the process. Yes, a classic. What's Roy or the internal investment? Recruitment, many recruiting criteria. We have like 19 people participating now, so I'm still on a wait a second, 20. <laughs> we already have a solution, love that one, yes. Been in that situation as well. budget, resources, seems to be quite strong. Oh, fear of imperfection, lack of exposure. Seems to be quite clear that we're going into the direction of time and money slash budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, to me, it really feels like we should be talking about time and money. Um, so actually, as we are in the bar camp session, um, I would like to send you into, oops, 
into no oh. um into breakout sessions because like based on the word cloud and what you've been silently brainstorming i have the feeling that um the biggest challenges you encountered up to now is the discussion of stakeholders saying okay we don't have the time and money or we don't give you the time and money sometimes that's just the same so what I'd like to do with you now is send you into breakout sessions, giving you 10 minutes. You're going to be about four to five people in one room um, and discuss how you can cope with this challenge. What you do. Oops. Someone just unmuted him or herself. It sounded like a kid. Hello. Welcome. I'm really happy that you're joining us as well. <laughs> Hello. Um, okay, so I'd like to send you into uh, breakout sessions with uh, four to five participants and take 10 minutes of your time discussing in those little groups, how can you cope with the challenge of stakeholder telling you like, hey, we don't have the time or the money to do research. Come up with three ideas in the group. Um, and after these 10 minutes, we all come back into the big um, into this big room and I will call three groups to share their ideas afterwards on how to cope with the challenge. So it could be you, be prepared. Um, I will um, post this questions or this um, challenge again into the main chat and you will be able to read that chat um, even by the time you are in the breakout sessions. So I'm going to send you into the breakout sessions now. You have 10 minutes, I'm seeing a lot of people leaving now. Um, let me see whether we, I think our groups are still equally shared. It might be that you're on a group with only two people, but I'm sure you can manage. Okay, so um, brainstorm on, you have the challenge of your stakeholder, your team, your boss telling you, hey, we don't have the time and the money for doing research. What would you do? How would you argue against it? And let's see each other again in 10 minutes. Hello. Yeah. I I was the only one in a, in the group. There was no one else. Oh. Okay. All right. Let me check. Um. Okay. Um. Can you tell me your name so I can put you into another group? Yeah. It is Paderborn, Germany. I'm sorry. Paderborn, Germany. Okay, I will try to put you into another group, okay? Okay. Hmm. 
Are you in a group where there is someone in now, Paderborn, Germany? No, so I have not been added to any group yet. Okay, I have reassigned you. Um, wait. Let's try this one. Okay, I'm getting an invite, so I'll join a group. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Hi, Nina. Maria Hello. here. It happened the same to me. It seems like I was the oh. only one. Okay, a lot of people jumped yeah. out. 40 people jumped out. I'm really sorry for that. <laughs> That's no, no worries. That's okay. Okay, I'm going to try to find another group for you, okay? <laughs> That's fine. Thank you so much. <laughs> you're welcome. Mm. Uh, let me see which one you were. Just a second. I see more and more people in the main one. I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, I'm pulling everyone back into the main one because sure. I had 44 no, yeah. even more people leaving the call. Um, That's so. fine, Nina. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> so yeah, I think 10, minutes, 10 uh, minutes maybe is a bit too long. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but I'm pulling everyone back into the main room. Um, should be here soon. Nice idea with the breakout sessions. Um, obviously, don't work. <laughs> <laughs> um, hello. Um, I cut down on your time with the breakout session because actually, by the time we went into the breakout sessions, I had half of the participants leaving the call. Um, is everyone back in with me? Okay, how can I see this now? Okay, it looks as though everyone is back in the main room. Um, sorry for that. By the time I wanted to send you um, into the breakout sessions, I had a lot of people leaving and I had more and more people coming back at me and saying like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm a room all with myself, um, which might be nice, but which is difficult for discussion. So I figured um, this is a prototype, let's just do it another way. <laughs> um, let's try to do um, a brainstorming. And what I'd like to do, um, <laughs> well, this is a quick adaption now, but I think we're gonna manage. Um, because actually what I initially wanted to do is call out three groups and asking them um, for their ideas. So what would you do if you are in the situation of a stakeholder saying like, hey, I don't have time and money. So initially I wanted to write it down here. Maybe we just gonna do it together. Do a little brainstorming. I don't have the time to put up a moral now, but I'm sure we're gonna manage. Um, so, is there maybe someone who would like to share what he or she would do um, by the time you are encountered by this problem? Maybe raise your hand um, or give me a message in the chat so I know that you would like to share. Hi, Victoria. Hi, Victoria. Hi, if you want, I can start. 
yes, that would be amazing. I'm taking notes or write down what your idea is. I saw you're a market researcher. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I, in fact, I am a um, freelance market researcher. So mm -hmm. our first idea <laughs> to reduce cost, uh, I mean, I'm not very objective, was to <laughs> use freelancers. <laughs> You know, <laughs> we don't have uh, um, uh, a structured cost as market research institutes, so that could be, could be a, a solution. <laughs> That's a very good one. <laughs> the other one uh, could be uh, just just not try to reduce cost, so uh, show the value of your research. So, how know, would you do that? Try to not to reduce costs. And the, the, the last one regarding cost also, we, we haven't speak about um, time. Uh, so uh, automate proce process as much as possible. We don't know how. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good idea. Automation and really showing the value. So kind of like also what I did in the beginning. Cool, thank you. I have a raised hand by Zaid Kwavai. I don't know whether I um, pronounced that correctly, but you have something you'd like to share. Yeah, uh, hi. Um, yeah, so I was speaking to Amar from Finland, so, and uh, we were discussing. So the main, the, the, the main thing that we both agree on is access to end users and choosing the right participants, especially when you work in a corporate where you, access to end users could be sometimes a little bit frustrating. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing is, which in my opinion, I, I really like it, is involving the development team. As, as you know, most, most of the time the development team are occupied and they're busy. But as soon as I started involving them as uh, passive um, um, participants in the, in the research, interviews, focus groups, or whatever method, it, you start seeing more involvement from them. So you don't need to convince them that you should do this and skip that. And mm -hmm. this is the second thing, involving the development team as at least as passive uh, participants. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I also, I love that one, um, involving the stakeholders, because actually I remember when I stepped into the industry, one of the main things I learned in the beginning was that as a researcher is my task to, how do you say, get people out of the ivory tower. Um, exactly. Because a lot of people, how do you say, it, it work on something or invent something, which is quite far away from their everyday world or something they would use. So we always said, okay, as a researcher, I have to get the stakeholders out of the ivory tower. So I love that one. Yeah. Cool. What is your third one? Um, the third one is, is budgeting. For in, in the company I work in uh, right now, it's not, it's, it's not an issue, but majority of startups will find it an issue. Uh, uh, but at least, you know, we should, as, as I think, uh, um, the first person mentioned, I, I forgot, I think it was uh, Victoria. Yeah, so if, if the value, if the value of this is, is greater than the, than the budget, then definitely my boss will be convinced and we can do it. But it's not, it's not a big deal for me as much as the first two points. Thank yeah. you. Okay, well, thank you very much. Yeah. I have Vikram from UK who would also like to share. Uh, hi. Hi, so uh, I, I would like you. to, uh, same here, I would like to share one point. I don't have three, sorry, but uh, what uh, I think uh, one of the important point is to follow an iterative approach and to, to uh, like iterative approach with milestones after every iteration. So if you are able to show um, uh, quick results of every phase, let's say, then maybe the leadership team gets uh, like build, uh, develops more trust and then they are willing to dedicate more resources uh, as the time progresses rather than asking them for uh, uh, like resources and money for two year research. So it's kind of like proof of concept throughout the product development. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Really love that one. Uh, because, uh, yeah, actually, that is a thing. And I honestly, I realized that quite often working with stakeholders, by the time they, they saw the power and the impact of research themselves, um, you have them on board. Um, because when you, know, when you think about these three circles of viability, desirability, and feasibility, um, if you don't do research, you are running the risk of spending a lot of money um, on an idea or 
on developing something which at the end of the day will just cost you, but no one will ever need it. So proof, okay. proof of concept. Uh, amazing. Absolutely, yeah. I have in the chat, Selina has another idea I'd like to share. Hello. Hello. So I have one additional idea. It's um, something, so whenever you do not get the approval from the top management to, to kick up research, uh, you could even do something like a bottom-up transformation process, you know, having like something like an underground initiative where you uh, start, you know, it only works if you're already there, if you're not a freelancer, as mentioned in the beginning, but you're part of a team already. Um, you sense that some insights are missing, you kick off some research, you start gathering insights and you then have a better um, basis to pitch the, the next steps to the management because you already have some insights in hand. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That is a very good one. Um, and honestly, that also brings me to think what I always like to do when thinking about research and having the discussion of, oh, we don't have time and resources. Um, as a researcher, I think you always need to be, how to say, quite pragmatic and have to look at what resources do I have um, and what can I do with it? Um, because what I see quite often that um, stakeholders have this big thing in their minds like okay if i tell my team they're allowed to do research now i won't see them for six months and they will spend um i don't know a lot of thousands of euros um so it's actually quite important of checking like okay what what are the biggest fear of like what do you think how much time or money is lost um and secondly how can we maybe find a pragmatic solution to that so actually what selena just said maybe it's worth doing a little first inside project um, and, and showing what was already out there and with that pitching and showing what might be even there um, if you go more in depth and all these kind of things. So I really love that thing. We already have it at 10 to 4. What I would um, propose you now, um, I know the session, we can do it um, 10 more minutes, but we can also extend. Apart from what we've now did this little discussion or brainstorming on, are there maybe other pressuring um, questions with research I can, well, help you with right now? So maybe also use the chat function for that. Apart from that, we will keep on chatting about um, the challenge I post here, um, pitching it to stakeholders. But in case you do have other questions, you can also write them in the chat. I'm going to try to cater to them. Um, Jessica Martinez you wanted to share. And yes, I, I will prioritize a project that needs support with the research. That's uh, what I will do. Prioritize a project by, based on your research results. Based so on what project needs support with research in case that we have a, a variety of projects. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's also like a, a very good point. So it's like the idea of, I don't know, you have different things out there, but you probably only have research budget for one project. So it's your exactly. task as a researcher finding out where um, there is maybe the biggest problem or maybe the biggest white gap in the landscape. Exactly that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Great. Um, oh, I have Joe here. Uh, I love that one. Uh, the client is nervous of giving me access to their customers. Ooh, big one. Um, honestly, um, that already tells you a lot about um, the client um, because um, you know, like, well, design thinking or any nowadays product development should be about being close to your users or to your customers. And by the time the client is nervous of giving you access to your, uh, to the customer, the question for me would be why? Um, and it's probably that deep down in their heart, my hypothesis, they know that something's going wrong. Because if I have the feeling I give you access to my customers and you're allowed to talk to them, um, and I feel they are all really happy, I would give you access. So actually it would be quite interesting to find out where the client really um, sees the problem. Um, 
<laughs> Our marketing department has already done the research. Uh, I love that one. Uh, that's actually my favorite one. Um, it's quite often I step into projects and um, the client says, oh, we already know everything about our customer. Um, in my, I would say, four to five first years in the industry, I always nodded and said like, oh yeah, okay, okay, you're right. And uh, we kept on um, doing other research. Actually, my first question now, when someone, whether it's marketing or market research, tells me we already know everything, then I very kindly ask, oh, that's amazing. Show me what you have. Because quite often uh, what I see, clients have like a whole bunch of information about their users but quite often that information doesn't answer the question. So um, they might have like big access sheets of um, knowing what is maybe the favorite magazine or whatsoever of a specific target group, but um, they are standing at a specific point in their project. They are standing um, at a cross mark and probably have to decide whether they go left or right with their development. And for that crossroad, there is a specific question you need to have answered to go left or right so when the client tells you you already know everything look at what do they know and whether with that knowledge you can answer the question of going left or right whether if you can't do it based on what they already know sorry to say then extra research is needed um, okay let me look into more questions here <laughs> just do it you can apologize afterwards love that one yes be blunt show the using case studies from others yes i love what mohammed is writing here show the value of research by using case studies from other startups or businesses of the same size and how research was helpful to improve their profits or the impact on return on investment Yo. Yeah. so you don't only have to argue how to say from from your own banks, but you can also use examples um, which are out there. Um, okay, I do have a raised hand here. Um, wait. Santa Kumaran, I hope I pronounced that right. You have something you would like to share. Yes, Santa. You can call me Santa. Okay. Hi, Santa. Oh, I love that okay. one. <laughs> <laughs> normally, normally what I'll do, I'll do the first two days workshop first. Yeah. So I'll take my participants to Baskin Robbins or Starbucks. Mm -hmm. And come, once we, we finish eating ice cream and everything, we'll come back. And I'll ask them to do a journey map on their experience. So when they do the actual journey map, they'll see a lot of pain points during the visit to Baskin Robbins. Mm -hmm. So I will ask them, do you think if you do the journey map for your own company, you'll get this result? They'll mm -hmm. tell no. Mm -hmm. Normally yeah. when it's internally driven, it's always politically correct. So I will tell mm -hmm. them, you have to get the actual data from your actual customers. Whatever mm -hmm. you're going to assume is not the actual pain point of your customers. Ask your customers, talk to them. Then I'll get the buy-in mm -hmm. for the research. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Actually, that, that's a good one. Thank you for that. Because I, really, I always feel the power of research is about experiencing. Um, and that's why I also like to take my stakeholders along. And if I don't, if I'm not able to pitch for an entire research project, but at least have, as you just said, you know, like pull out one thing and it can be so eye opening to yeah, leave your ivory tower and, and, and see what's really happening out there. Because quite often, um, the ones developing um, ideas or working on building them are not the ones who will use it later on. And this mismatch is something that we can, um, how do you say, close this gap. We can close it with research. Cool. Uh, let me see what else is in there. Yeah, involve all stakeholders that are not as close. Procurement, finance. Oh, actually, maybe... Uh, we are already over time, but maybe I can show, like, uh, tell you like a war story, because I remember um, I was asked by a, a big global company um, to do research on laundry detergents, and actually I flew to Egypt. Uh, we did it in Egypt, Algeria, all over Europe, um, and they wanted to uh, market their.
quite expensive branded laundry detergent. And um, they had these flashy marketing things and everything. And um, I talked to the woman in, um, in Egypt and what we found out that actually um, the women who are running the households there, most of them didn't have a lot of money. So um, they were not able to buy, I don't know, once a month, a big package of laundry detergent but that's what we found out with the research. Laundry detergents in Egypt that were successful um, sold little one-time sachets because then by the time the money was there, um, the woman could go to the shop and buy it. They weren't able to spend the money on bulk purchase and buy like these big one or two kilogram ones. And that was a very, very, how to say, easy and simple insights. Um, but we found that out by going into the field and actually having the client with us. And I think that is a very nice example as well. Okay, um, let me just see whether there are any more um, raised hands. I don't really see that right now. Or am I? Otherwise, shout out now. <laughs> no, okay. Well, thanks for joining me for this one hour. I know 60 minutes is just like, oh, I have some more chat. Um, 60 minutes is just like a very condensed time frame. Um, if you have further questions, just feel free, reach out to me via LinkedIn. I'm also um, publishing free articles on LinkedIn um, regarding to research. So just check my account. There might be interesting stuff there as well. And yeah, thanks for joining. I really enjoy having you in the call and um, spending your precious Saturday afternoon with me. I hope you all had a coffee. <laughs> Thank you. Not yet. <laughs> We're fasting here in Jordan, Middle East. <laughs> Thank okay. you very much. Well, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> bye.